on yourself, on your faith, on your dreams, on your mind, on your health, yeah You gotta work, never tell, keep your head down, find what you love and excel, yeah Push and pull and repel any hate, go create what you want, feel compelled, yeah And once you finally get a taste of the race, you'll never look back once you felt that Don't let somebody take your time and your worth, just focus on yourself first Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Money, etc. Oh, doing very well. Yeah, if you ask me, I'm doing very well. I'm happy, I'm excited. It's almost a new month. And guys, by the time you see this video, it's gonna be like the third or the fourth day in the month of March. So happy new month, guys. I hope it's gonna be a great month for you all. So you know, um, we started um, a new series on my channel called the family and marriage series so today we'll be discussing the second episode of the series so last week we talked about our young couples having living in-laws stay with them right from the beginning of their marriage whether that's good or not we discuss so if you haven't seen that you should go back and watch that video so, so guys today um i don't have any guests to discuss this with you so it's just going to be me so basically i'm going to make it a discussion i'll just be speaking off the top of my head you know telling you what i think and what i feel we should do in the circumstance of today's topic so what are we talking about today before i um delve into what we will really be discussing let me tell you what led to me choosing this topic for today so a couple of weeks back, I was listening to the radio and um, this random story came up on radio where um, this young lady who was basically raised by a elder brother had um, a brother over to the house. So I think it was Christmas time or maybe New Year celebration. So she already is married with a husband and I think two kids and then our elder brother who basically raised her as a child came over to spend the holiday with them again i'm not sure if it was christmas break or new year break so but the elder brother was around to spend the holiday with them so when this elder brother came into the house um this young lady was overly you know excited um she was so pumped you know about having a brother in the house and um let me backtrack a bit when she was younger, this elder brother of us played a huge role in her life. Basically, the elder brother trained her through primary school, secondary school, and maybe university. So she was really excited to have him over in the house. So while the man or the elder brother was in the house with them, this young lady did everything possible to ensure that her elder brother had a good time in the house. She would, you know, cook for him, make sure um, it was well taken care of. In summary, she ensured that the elder brother had a good time, you know, while he was there in the house with them. So after the elder brother left, you know, for his own um, house, the husband then called the wife and said to her that he was mad at her. Why? Because all the while the elder brother was around in their family house, she paid so much attention to the elder brother that she neglected the husband. This was the husband saying this to his wife now that while the elder brother was around she neglected him she didn't pay attention to him basically focused all her entire attention on her elder brother and the most striking part of the story was that while the elder brother was there in the house with them the husband said the wife served the elder brother before him so imagine it's time for breakfast and this woman in her case served her elder brother before serving her husband and that pattern repeated itself till the elder brother left the house so the husband was really mad that this was a pattern the wife adopted so for the husband he felt that the wife should have served him first because he is the husband regardless of whatever role the elder brother played in her life the husband felt the wife should have served him first so that's what we'll be discussing today who should be served first now we'll be looking at it from the point of view of a father coming over to visit his daughter and her husband so who should the wife serve first the father or the husband that's what we'll be talking about today and then to just make it more broad should a wife take better care of her father when he's around in the house than a husband or should the treatment be equal should it be the same should the respect be the same should the treatment be the same should the care be the same that is what we are here to talk about and i don't have a great answer to this question i've never experienced it so i don't know who should be served first i don't know what kind of treatment it should be given but i'm going to be discussing with you based on what i think is right and what should be um done you know from an african perspective because i'm african yes and i'm nigerian to be precise 
So guys, in this situation, I think that a woman has to be very smart about things. A woman should be self-aware. Even a man should be self-aware. But today we'll be talking about the woman. from. So I'll be speaking from the woman's perspective. I think a woman should be self-aware. So because we are looking at the little foxes that spell the vine, the little foxes that, you know, creep up in marriages, in homes, and just make things go worse, add up together, build up together to become a old situation that then it breaks the marriage. So we need to pay attention to these little foxes. And one of them is this issue of having a preference for one's father or for one's other brother over one's husband. So for me, if I'm to look at it critically, um, I know that I'm one of those young women who get excited when they see their family members. And um, I mean, I get excited when I see my siblings. I get excited when I'm speaking to my siblings on the phone. So I know that if my siblings will come to my house to stay with me, to visit me for some time, I may get too excited. And because I already have this understanding that I may get too excited, there's a high probability that I would focus more on my siblings or on my parents than my husband. I, there's that chance, you know, for people like me, for people who are overly excited over family, over relationships and what have you. So because I already understand my kind of person, I already understand my nature, I feel like when I do have visitors over, especially my siblings or my mom, my father is late now, so if my mom comes visiting, visiting or any of my siblings come visiting, I already have it at the back of my mind and whenever they come around, I would try to ensure that my husband has his place. Um, I would maintain the standard that I've always maintained prior to my you know, siblings or my mother coming to visit to the, such that if I'm to serve, if I'm to do anything, you know, maybe serve breakfast or make breakfast, my husband comes first. Yeah, yeah, my husband would definitely come first. So being an African woman and being, well, <laughs> I would like to say I'm a feminist, even a 22nd century woman, I would like to say I'm black, but I still feel like some things should be done in the right way. And for me, the right way will be to serve my husband first. And in order to avoid any kind of situation that may warrant, you know, somebody feeling bad, like as me, if my father were to be alive and if he were to come visiting, I think I would be smart about it. So the way to be smart about it for me will be to, one, put my husband's food on the dining table at the same time I put my father's food on the dining table and I would call both of them at the same time to come get their breakfast and that breakfast is served, breakfast is on the dining table. So each of them can decide to go first to pick their food on the dining table, to eat their food first on the dining table or wait for the other or whatever way they want to do it. But I would make sure that I serve both of them at the same time to avoid any issue of, oh, you are preferring my, your father to me or my father feeling like you are preferring your husband to me. And then I think another thing that makes it difficult for most people is because, you know, the role of a father in a girl's life is huge, especially for those who have good fathers in their lives who have good parents you know you would see your parents as that idol like ah, my father is an idol my mother is an idol i have to treat them well i have to take good care of them now that they are with me you know you understand what i'm trying to say so of which the husband as well you know is the head of the family the one who makes provisions even if he's not really making provisions as such but he's still the head of the family and he deserves that regard he deserves that respect so in order to avoid any form of you know conflict or any issues arising there from like i said earlier i would put the food on the table at the same time and each of them my father or my husband you know can decide to eat whenever they want to eat but i would serve the two of them at the same time i another way i think we can actually go around it is in a situation where my father and my mother come to visit me at the same time they are here together with me of course i would tell my mother to come and serve her husband yes that's the way i'm going to do it because i learned this from my mom so typically in my um, house where I grew up, whenever my siblings and yeah, maybe husbands or wives come over, yes, the husbands come over to visit, my mom, if my mom, you know, is the one who cooks, my mom would, after cooking, serve her husband and then she would call my siblings that they should come and serve their husbands. So reverse the role now. So having my parents come around to visit with my mother, around and my father around at the same time i would serve my husband and i would call my mom to come and have a husband that makes it super super easy and there'll be less friction and in a situation where uh maybe my mom 
um, says maybe she's sleepy, you know, she's not in the house or something happens and I have to serve both my father and my husband. Like I just said, I would serve both of them at the same time. And in a situation where I feel like my husband doesn't really care, maybe he's not really that African man who cares about who, who uh, gets served first. If I feel like my husband may feel jealous, I would definitely ask him like, babe, do you have any preference? Do you mind if I give daddy uh, this food? Let's say for instance, there's just a little quantity of food in the house and somebody has to eat, or I know that my father is really hungry and my husband is really hungry. I would definitely ask my husband, babe, what do you think? Should I serve daddy first or would you want to eat first? So whatever he says is what I would do. Because at the end of the day, when daddy leaves, it's just going to be my husband and I. It's just going to be the two of us. So we have to make this thing called marriage work. We have to be responsible. And um, let me see. Um, yeah, so I just feel like we need to know ourselves we need to know our marriage we need to know who we are married to and we need to be careful when we are dealing with relatives we need to be careful when we are dealing with our spouses so if you already know that your husband is the type who is jealous if you already know your husband is the type who would want to be served first if you already know your husband wants you to run his bath before you run your father's bath please do for your husband before you do for your father but don't do it in such a way that it will be very obvious to your father that oh you care more about your husband than your father. Two of them are special and they hold a special place in your heart. So you need to know how to balance things out. Now let's reverse the role. So now imagine if it's the husband's mother who comes visiting, you know, as the man as well, there's a probability for the man to be overly excited that his mother is around. There's a probability that the man will want to take care of the mother. You know, you want to take your mommy around town. You want to take her shopping. You want to ensure that she eats well, she sleeps well, she's well taken care of. If you already know just like me that there's a probability for you to be overly excited when your mom is around as a man, you need to be careful because women are naturally jealous. And don't come here to tell me that you're not a jealous person. Every woman has a natural tendency to be jealous. Yes. Even if it's you know um, a relative that is around or your mother or your sibling or your sister or whatever women have a high tendency to be jealous so you need to be careful as a man not to overdo things for your mom while your wife is around so i'm not saying you shouldn't do things for your mom do things for your mom but make sure that you don't overdo things and you don't do this in such a way that your wife will be jealous so for instance you go out and then you buy say um you branch at popeyes or you buy you branch at kfc and then you buy chicken and chips and then you just bought just one plate of chicken and chips and then you came home and gave that to your mom how would you expect your wife to feel the one who is taking care of your kids the one who is your partner your life partner your friend your best friend if that's how you run things in your family i wouldn't expect you as a man to go and just buy a plate of kentucky fried chicken for your mom you should buy the same thing you buy for your mom, you buy for your wife. And if each has a preference for one thing or the other, buy what each person likes. Buy what your mom likes for her, buy what your wife likes for her. Don't make anybody feel left out. Don't ever make anybody feel left out. Same thing for women and their dads. Don't make your husband feel left out in any case. So the basic and the moral message that I have to pass across in this video is that know yourself, know what your spouse likes, know what their preferences, and don't overdo things. Take good care of your parents, take good care of your father, take good care of your mother, but don't overdo things and don't make anyone jealous of the other. Don't make your mother get jealous of your wife, don't make your wife get jealous of your mother, don't make your husband get jealous of your father, don't make your father get jealous of your husband. So that's a moral lesson. So in this case, my advice to the woman that a case was discussed on the radio is that she should have been very attentive, she should have been she should have known her husband, especially because she's been married for long. She should have known the kind of husband she's married to that is a jealous guy, that is someone who wants to be well taken care of, you know, someone who wants to be respected, someone who wants attention, you know. So if your husband is that kind of person, take care of your husband, pay attention to him just the same way you would pay attention to your father. And if your father is also the jealous kind of person who feels like, oh, I trained you, I raised you, you should give me that regard, you should give me that respect, you should learn how to manage things. You know yourself, you know your family, so learn your family's body language, learn their traits, learn their personalities, learn what they like, learn their preferences, and just ask the Holy Spirit, of course, to help you in all of these things. You cannot disregard the role of the Holy Spirit in this situation. So I'm a Christian, so I always have to talk about this. 
ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, ask the Holy Spirit to direct you, and again, know what your partner wants. I hope I've been able to help you guys, you know, um, today. Um, so we'll see you again. It's bye for now. And next week, we'll talk about another more important issue, another little fox that spoiled the vibe. So we'll see. It's bye for me, girl. Morning. Bye.